A Victorian sailor disappears at sea. Might actually jump in the water and just have a look underneath the yacht. Ron Anderson has either drowned or he's had to leave town in a hurry. He looked happier when I saw him. Yeah. Oh, okay. And in Queensland, where schoolboy Daniel Morecambe's abduction shocked the nation. Must have been forced in. That's the only way he would have gone in. Well, hey guys, now his family has the support of someone special. What they've had to endure has been beyond my comprehension. And where is pensioner Bernie Woods? He did swipe that one terminal yesterday. He hasn't left his wife's side in 43 years. Bernie, wherever you are, please come home. <laughs> Plus the teenager who befriends total strangers. She thinks anyone wants to be her, her friend. Simone may have made one friend too many. In Queensland, four years ago, the disappearance of 13-year-old schoolboy Daniel Morecambe touched the nation's heart. And so began Queensland's biggest ever police investigation. We've had over 16,000 individual leads that we've followed up every week. Uh, we get a telephone call or get information from Crime Stoppers of new areas of information. Daniel was abducted from a bus stop near his home on the Sunshine Coast in December 2003 on his way to buy Christmas presents for his two brothers and parents. And an outpouring of public grief has seen police working round the clock to find him. You just keep on going and just follow up the next uh, lead and, and indeed we're still working on material we received uh, initially in December of 2003 that we haven't been able to either rule in or rule out. And the calls just keep coming because of the massive public awareness campaign launched by Daniel's desperate parents. Thank you, bikers, for such a wonderful turnout today. Your clear collective message in attending the third annual ride for Daniel is that crimes against children are the worst of the worst. And these hundreds of bikers agree, turning out recently in support of the family. Daniel's abduction three and a half years ago from a spot just a short distance from here has revolted everyone. The challenge ahead is for the media outside our state borders to pick up Daniel's case and to continue to push it even harder. And they've been doing just that for four years. For Queensland Police, this case is far from over. The number of people we've spoken to, one of those persons holds, holds a vital piece of information that could well solve this case. Uh, and we just uh, need them to come forward and, and tell us. Meanwhile, at the New South Wales Missing Persons Unit... Well, can I speak to Jean Anderson, please? Yes, it's Jean Anderson speaking. Doug is making his first call to the wife of missing sailor Ron Anderson. Ron vanished two weeks ago while sailing from Victoria to Queensland. He was ringing me every day and I was there backing him up with, you know, sending warm clothing when he got stuck in the hall. Oh, OK. And, you know... Does he have any financial problems at all? No. I withdrew $1,000. Um, and sent it to him probably about three to four weeks. OK. And that's the last money you sent him? Yeah. Just as worrying is police have found Ron's yacht abandoned in waters north of Sydney. We're going to attend uh, the Port Stephens area and make inquiries with the local police there. Yeah. And uh, certainly we'll be in contact with you in relation to uh, the outcome of those investigations. Thank you. OK. Bye. Bye-bye. It's out of character that he rings her regularly and uh, she hasn't received a phone call from him for a week. He has a mobile phone. That mobile phone goes to Message Bank at the moment. And it's certainly a concern for the local police and myself. Back in Queensland, the ride for Daniel is over. But for the Morecams and their sons Dean and Daniel's twin Bradley, the wondering is never over. Dean has moved out, so family dinners like this are even more important. Dean comes over maybe once or twice a week for dinner, but there's always one missing. It's, it's always a bit too quiet, I think. And that's how it's been. Dad, what about my TV? Ever since Daniel, seen in this home video with Bradley, vanished nearly four years ago. We quickly realised that the only way to improve worse to better is to, uh, is to hold the family unit together as best you can. And uh, over the journey, there's been um, 
a few laughs and, and some good times and as I say, creating some new history, just the four of us. Um, but as Denise says, we're always missing one and, um, and we do our best to, to cope in those circumstances. And that empty chair is a constant reminder of their loss. Torn us all apart and yeah, it's hurting everyone. Dad keeps a lot of his emotions in, but mum for a while there, she, yeah, she was, wasn't the best, as, as you can say. Dean's mm. way of coping is through tattoos, dedicating one arm to his missing brother. The left arm's for him. He got never forgotten goodbye. And yeah, it's like, it's like, a, like a cross, the three candles, two's lit, one's out, because on the, I think it was on your birthday, first birthday, after, after it happened, there was three candles and one of them kept going out. Daniel's twin, Bradley, feels a deeper pain. He has never spoken publicly about his feelings before tonight. Oh, it's affected me a lot. Just, see, because Dean's moved out, and so it's almost as if I'm a single child now. Yeah. In New South Wales, Back on the case of missing sailor Ron Anderson, Doug and Nikki have arrived in Port Stephens, two hours north of Sydney. They're joining police, searching for the lost Victorian sailor. This is Nikki. G'day, Nikki. How are you? The story is at this stage we've located the yacht, which is around at Shoal Bay, and we believe there were two people on it, and we just haven't been able to locate the, the two persons on board. The last they were seen was carrying a dinghy up Shoal Bay Beach, and nothing since and that's what seven days ago so oh, okay. yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a tricky one this one their only clue is ron's abandoned yacht we'll just have a bit of a look about the vessel and, and maybe around the, the ocean floor that's around the vicinity and, and we'll go from there in queensland not a day goes by that daniel morcom's parents don't relive that tragic afternoon well here we are it's 10 past two it's a sunday you can see how busy the road is. This is the last spot Danny was seen alive. Daniel came down here about half past one on Sunday the 7th of December. He was waiting to catch a bus to go down. He wanted to get a haircut and some Christmas presents. About a kilometre down the road, the bus was broken down, but Daniel couldn't see that that bus was broken down. So he'd been waiting here for about 40 minutes. At 10 past two, a replacement bus came past, drove past Daniel and didn't stop. About three minutes later, another bus came past and Daniel had disappeared. He wasn't here at the bus stop. Three lost minutes that devastated the family. Well, I probably drive past here every day or every second day. I only occasionally stop and clean Daniel's uh, clerk and pick up some old flowers and so forth, letters and parcels. But it, it's not where Daniel is, he's not buried here. To me, it's just the last spot that we know he was. It's clear the pain of reliving the nightmare is unbearable, but they know there is no other choice. When the second bus had driven past, the bloody bus didn't stop. A broken down bus, another that didn't stop. Twists of fate which conspired to snatch the young schoolboy. I don't think whatever the man said to us would help. I mean, he didn't stop, now Daniel's not here. It's not gonna help, it's not gonna bring him back. Back in New South Wales, at Port Stephens, Doug and Nikki join that police search to sweep Ron's yacht for clues. The yacht was found drifting here at Shoal Bay, but there was no sign of Ron or his deckhand. Brett, you go on, just yep. the only person. We'll just have a quick scan through it. We'll see if there's some sort of evidence to suggest that they've, um, you know, met with foul play or something like that. All of Ron's things are still here. Hasn't been ransacked or anything. All right, what we might do is just jump in the water and just have a look underneath the yacht. With no sign of life on board, police wonder what's hidden below. Meanwhile, back in Queensland, at the bus stop where 13-year-old Daniel Morcom was abducted, his dad, Bruce, is pleading for this man to come forward. A number of witnesses in the cars and in the buses have observed the shadowy figure standing behind Daniel, leaning against this rock. 
The man has the never time, been identified. He uh, has a gaunt, tanned complexion, unkept, wavy hair. That's the person that we're looking for. He's the person standing there leaning against the rock. He was the closest person, we believe, making contact with Daniel, and then he's gone. There were reports of this car associated with a white-styled courier van. They were parked just across the road together in conversation. These cars have never been found. Neither has Daniel's watch. Daniel was carrying this uh, silver fob watch with a gold engraving saying Dan on it. He also had a, a brown billabong wallet with about 100 to $150 cash in it that, he was, that he'd saved up from working, um, doing passion fruits before and after school. Daniel's parents are convinced someone must have seen something. Come forward, get this guilt off your conscience. Someone has an answer. Just come forward with an answer for us. Thank you. So that our family has some peace and we can lay Daniel to rest. Good. At Port Stephens, police have finished searching underneath Ron's yacht. Sarge, can't see anything down there, mate. There's no lines except the, the anchor line. We'll uh, secure it and take it back to um, the station. But just as it all looks hopeless, local yachties give police their first break. Paul Dingy was over there all night. So I thought the young fella gone off for, you know, to see the guys. The uh, old fella stayed on board because he wasn't overly interested in having a night out, you know. With the yacht now in quarantine, Doug and Nicky investigate their only lead. The fellow that's missing, we had a beer with him here the other day. You think that would be the gentleman? Yeah. OK. Would that be the same person you think you were talking to? He looked happier when I saw him. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did he mention what sort of boat he owned? I said, is that your old boat out there? He said, yes. And he made uh, references that he hadn't, the crew had gone the day before. I don't know if it was one or two, or I assume it was one person. He didn't mention a name at all or anything like that? That's now three separate sightings. And if Ron or his deckhand were here, they would have signed in. Jackpot. They've got the deckhand's name. And there's even an address. Back on Queensland Sunshine Coast... Just sort of going through them now. Task Force detectives investigating yeah, Daniel Morecambe's abduction one. are busy logging new tips. Nearly four years, uh, which is unique to have such a complex and ongoing investigation with dedicated investigators for that length of time. 5,000 people interviewed, and there's a record $250,000 reward on offer. One of those persons holds a vital piece of information that could well solve this case, uh, and we just uh, need them to come forward and to give us that information that uh, may put Bruce and Denise uh, at ease a little bit. I mean, you could never be at ease, but uh, to, to finally uh, find out what happened to Daniel would be some, some comfort to them. Back on the New South Wales Central Coast, police have had a breakthrough in their search for 73-year-old yachty Ron Anderson. A local lady who works at the visitors centre up here has 99% um, positively identified the older gentleman as coming in there on Sunday morning and stating that he wanted to get back to Sydney urgently. She's then uh, given him several uh, options and he said, no, that's not quick enough, um, I'll have to make further arrangements. Um, she asked him whether they had um, access to a motor vehicle and he said no, that they were on a yacht moored around at Shoal Bay. So that's positive news. It's a strong lead, but why was he in such a hurry to leave town? It's a bit of a worry just because we just have no idea where he's gone. He's left his boat, um, it's all open, just completely out of character. Nikki's eyewitness is now their best hope of solving this case. So, Nikki needs to interview her. It's a significant day for Bruce and Denise Morecambe. Hi, Denise. I'm Hi, Sarah. Sarah. How are you? I'm the Federal Police. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. This hey, Sarah. Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Nice That's to Bruce. meet you. You too. Please, come in. Sarah Whalen is a counsellor working with the Australian Federal Police. She's developing a support program for friends and families of missing people. Can you tell me a bit more about what happened that day? 
this is the first time Denise and Bruce Morecambe have ever spoken to a counsellor. They do it in the hope that their experience will help others. I remember the boys got up and had breakfast and I, mem I remember putting the clothes out on the line even and, and Daniel said to me, I think his last words were, do you know what Dad bought you from a magazine that he'd bought the week before? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I don't. Mm -hmm. I remember him walking down the path to go to work and, and that was it. And that was it. Chilling echoes etched in a loving mum's memory, replayed over and over again. Bruce and I decided to walk from home and walk up our drive, because it was light then. Check the area, walked from home to the bus stop mm -hmm. and looked in all the, the shrub that we could see in him. We thought maybe... We thought maybe walking on the side of the road. Or, yeah. You know, a over. car had clipped him or something and that. Let's yeah. find what's left of the poor bugger and, and deal with it from there. Every family that would watch your story, it's every parent's worst nightmare for that to happen. And, and is it still now that, that feeling in the pit of your stomach? That pain is always there, mm -hmm. but you just learn to live with it. OK. Some families of missing people talk about the constant triggers that... I mean, there's everyday reminders that Daniel's not here, but just random things that you can't anticipate, like seeing something on the news where they might link Dan Daniel's case with another Which case. Or, do, yeah. And yeah. they'll bring up... Yeah. Daniel's photo. One of the, the worst things that I live with is, and it's to do with the not knowing, and unfortunately in Daniel's disappearance, um, his, his case is often linked with pedophile activity. Yeah. And, um, and you just wonder um, what the hours and the days uh, brought for him. Back in Port Stephens, the eyewitness confirmed that Ron came to the tourist office trying to get back to Sydney. If you can uh, make contact with all the rental car companies that work out of uh, Newcastle Airport to see if uh, Anderson or Turnbull have actually uh, rented a car. While Steve checks yeah, the I'm airlines, also... on the wharf, the forensic team focus on Ron's yacht. Today we're going to do an examination recording of the vessel by way of uh, note-taking, photographs, um, sketches, measurements and um, collection of fingerprints, DNA and other physical evidence which may be present. It's a painstaking process. Every inch of the boat needs to be dusted for prints. Hopefully that um, we'll end up with a result on the exhibits that we've collected today. If they match a print to their database, police will know who was on the yacht with Ron before he vanished. Meanwhile, back in Queensland, the Morecams are doing something no parent should ever have to do. Storing their missing child's things in the hope that one day he'll come home. Today I'm driving down to a storage set that we've got and I'm going to be taking all of Daniel's belongings down there. So they're really safe down there and, I mean, all of his belongings won't fit him while his clothes wear the wrong size if he does come back, so... Uh, I'll just keep them down there, I know they're safe. It's taken four years to find the strength to pack up Daniel's belongings. And this moment is hardest of all. You still have those memories, but unfortunately it, it, uh, he never made his 14th birthday, you know, and it's, it's just a, such a cruel way to, uh, to leave a sentence unanswered, you know? We, we just don't have, don't have an end to it. And uh, that's what we're working so hard to do is, is uh, put these people away and, and find Danny's remains and, and lay the poor bugger to rest. Packed in this box are Daniel's clothes, his treasured toys and the special things he made at school. Precious reminders his mum and dad can't bear to part with. They're really not negotiable. They'll be part of our family and if we don't know anything, they'll probably be buried with us. As they lock the door on memories of happier days, Bruce and Denise will continue to try and solve the mystery of Daniel's disappearance. In New South Wales, a new case has the missing persons unit on full alert. Pensioner Bernie Woods has vanished and Kelly is interviewing his frantic wife, Julie. We were standing in the kitchen, we were talking, and he said, oh, I'll, I'll just go and won't come back, I'll sleep in the car. 
I said, fine. And an hour later, I tried to ring him on the mobile and there was nothing. Yeah. And it's not like him to go away all night. He's never done it before. Yeah. In fact, Bernie hasn't spent a night away from his wife in 43 years. The report says that he's on some medi medication. Can you just explain to me what? He's on um, fluid tablets that he has to have because he's got many ears disease and he's got to have his um, fluid tablet every day. And I know he didn't have any yesterday. And if he has too much like tea or coffee or water, then he'll just drop. And if Bernie is on his own when he faints, yep. he could die. We'll come out and visit you. It'll probably be about an hour. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Bye, thank you. Really concerned at the moment. According to his wife, he requires some um, pretty serious medication in regards to an illness that he blacks out. So there's no time to lose. If Bernie collapses while he's driving, anything could happen. Meanwhile, back in Queensland, I've, uh, received your email with the Morecams are still working to help families of missing people. Is that live at the minute or has that still got uh, a little bit of work to go on that? Bruce and Denise sold their business and their home so they could launch the foundation they named after their son. One of the aims of the foundation is educating children on child safety and abduction. So far we've sent out around 500 DVDs all around Australia and what we do with the, with the schools, we ask them to show that to, to the different uh, classes and that way children have a, a good idea on protective behaviour messages. It's a huge step for one family, but the Morecams believe it's a small price to pay if it saves just one child. That's why we keep sending out our DVDs on child safety and abduction and, and just keep trying to reinforce that message to parents and the teachers and the school kids that it doesn't matter, Daniel was innocent and it can just happen to anyone. And we just don't want this to happen to another family. That's, that's what drives us. Meanwhile, in New South Wales, on the case of missing pensioner Bernie Woods, his wife Julie hasn't told anyone else that her husband has disappeared. Hi, Julie, is it? Hi. So Kelly and Mark are her only support. I'm very worried about him. He's all, he's all I've got, more and more he's got. So I just thought he might have, after a day, to ring me, let me know where he is or if he's all right. But there's nothing. That's why I'm worried. Does he have any other family, like brothers or sisters or anything around the no, Sydney area? No, no. Nothing? No. Any close friends that he's be no. likely to stay with? No. No, no friends, no. We, we go out together, we, we go bingo together. And... In fact, because of Bernie's fainting illness, he and Julie do almost everything together. He just sort of blacks out, just blacks out for a couple of minutes. Because we went to bingo one day and he just sort of flopped on the table and then he just uh, got up and he had a headache. That's why I'm worried, because I don't know if he had a tablet on Tuesday, but I don't, didn't have any yesterday, and today's the second day, so I don't know what happened. Bernie was Julie's first and only love, and now she can't bear the pain of not being with him. We got married when I was 16, and we had rough ties, we got through them now. So, I just I don't know where he is, I just don't know. <laughs> I'd walk and walk and walk anyway, <laughs> just to find him. He just, he's just gone. He's never done it before. First time ever. Back in Queensland, the Morecams are doing what they do most days. Search for Daniel. We're out today with our banners. We've got the date for Daniel coming up on the 31st of October. So we like to put our banners and posters up as a, an awareness day. And this gives people um, a good chance to see what's happening with the foundation and what functions that we have on. Hundreds of posters promote the day for Daniel and focus community awareness on his abduction. At the entrance to Australia Zoo, their good friends Steve and Terry Irwin built a constant reminder, a hibiscus tree and plaque dedicated to Daniel. Hey guys, how are you doing? Good Terry. Good to see you. You too. Goodness oh, sakes, look at you. Let's do a photograph for our Crikey magazine, because that goes into news agents now, and let's do a story there too. Oh, so you. we might as well, you know, get the message out everywhere mm. that we can. Terrific. And Terry knows all about personal loss. Each person in their life will suffer some form of tragedy, but what they've had to endure has been beyond my comprehension. 
I think the fact that they're going out and talking to kids about how to be safe and self-defense courses and stranger danger and all of the rules that we need to focus on with our children, I think that is most admirable. And it's something that I would really like to support and I'm passionate about as well and something that I do with my kids regularly. And while many might consider Terry a heroine, she is in awe of the Morkins. I think they're tremendous role models for anyone who is trying to accomplish the impossible and I'm sure wouldn't see themselves as heroes and that's what makes them so special. And so for us, kids are a number one priority. I know over Bindi's birthday, we let kids come into the zoo free of charge because that's part of celebrating the family and that's what Steve was all about. His family and the wildlife and environment, that was his life. And so we join the Morecams in standing up to defend families and protect our children. And it's this kind of unwavering support that keeps Denise and Bruce going. Back in New South Wales, four hours into her search for Bernie Woods, Kelly has moved to his favourite bingo hall. Just to check if he'd been into the club in the last couple of days. Yeah. Um, are you able to check that? Yeah, yeah, I can, yeah. Definitely. He did swipe at one terminal yesterday. Bingo. Kelly's hunch was spot on. Were we able to go in and just have a yeah, look I'll at the back of a bingo game That's just to see if he's there? Oh, great. In the hall, it's heads down. All the regulars are here, doing what they love best. But Bernie is not here. He's now been missing for more than 24 hours. He's never been away, away from home for a night at all. So I don't know. Just don't know where he is. At the New South Wales Missing Persons Unit, a late-breaking case has everyone on edge. Yes, good morning. May I speak to Dallas, please? Constable Jo Dawson is calling the distraught mother of missing teenager Simone. Right, so you normally have um, contact with her? Not for six weeks. There was no argument or anything. She's just left. And what's even more worrying is that Simone suffers from bipolar. But she does have complex mental health conditions. Right. Is she on any medication for that? Whether she takes it or not is something I don't know. Now, um, does she have any specific areas that she normally goes to or friends that she would normally go to? No, she doesn't have any friends. It's part of the, her condition where she hasn't, she's not able to sustain friendship. Simone's mum, Dallas, also reveals Simone has the dangerous habit of picking up total strangers. And Jo knows that is asking for trouble. She's concerned that um, due to her mental health history that she would meet somebody on the train and possibly go home with um, that person. That can lead into a dangerous situation, especially being a 17-year-old girl. Um, it makes her a bit more of a, a victim. Meanwhile, over in Sydney's southwest, Kelly and Mark are back on the streets looking for pensioner Bernie Woods. He is in a car, so um, it does give him the ability to travel a long way in, in a relatively short distance of time. Without his medication, we're really concerned because so it's been a couple of days now. Yeah, he needs to go home. And just as it all looks hopeless, <coughs> Kelly gets the call she's been waiting for. Hello? Oh, really? They just get that from the picture that we dropped off. Oh. Great. All right, no worries. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. As a result of us putting the flyers out at Bonnie Rig Plaza, um, the pharmacy there has notified the police that um, Mr Woods filled out a prescription this morning for his medication. He's driving around and he's in the local area, so he's not too far away. It's just a matter of now trying to find him to get him home so his wife knows that he's okay as well. So yeah, it's great news that he's having his medication. In a city of millions, it wouldn't take much for a 17-year-old as naive as Simone to run into real strife. Joe is now hoping Simone's mum, Dallas, will be able to piece together the 17-year-old's movements the day she vanished. She was going to go to the uh, employment agency. So she phoned me at work and, and said to me, oh, you, you've only left me $10. And I said, $10, that's OK. It's only $4 each way in the bus. And she went, oh, OK then, and hung up. And that was it. We come home, she was gone. Does Simone um, generally go away um, she like has... this? She has once earlier this year, but she's 
has several mental health issues and one of them is a vulnerable uh, personality disorder and rapid cycling bipolar. She thinks anyone wants to be her, her friend, which can be dangerous. Well, that's certainly our concerns, is that she's going to go home or go off with someone. And anyway, after we'll six weeks on the run, that's Dallas's yeah. concern too. She just wants to know her daughter is safe and well. With that, I suppose it's just the not knowing, which makes it really difficult to carry on. But if we know that everything's OK, that'll be fine. That's all we need to know. Meanwhile, in her search for Bernie Woods, Kelly has raced over to the shopping centre where he bought medicine to prevent fainting only two hours ago. He's sleeping in his car as far as we're aware. His wife's really concerned, so that's why we do want him back home, or at least know where he is so we can let his wife know. But she's too late. Bernie has gone. When she gets to the office, though, the phones are running hot with new leads. I went around the shop this morning and yep. a lady that went to St John's yesterday, she, he was spotted there. And a few people that I spotted in the shopping centre, they only seen him yesterday, so I thought, oh. yep. yeah, I just wish he'd ring and say, oh, I'm all right or something. Yep. So with only hours before nightfall, it could be another freezing night in the car for Bernie Woods. She's um, pretty stressed out at the moment. She really misses him. She's been sleeping on the lounge, waiting for him to come through the front door. He's going to his local RSLs and clubs and hopefully someone will contact us soon. I think that's really the best way that we're going to have a chance of finding him. And back at home, Julie is really feeling the anguish. Bernie, wherever you are, please come home. <laughs> I don't know where you are. I've looked everywhere for you. Please bring me or just come home, please. Across town, in the case of missing teenager Simone, Constable Joe Dawson has just had a breakthrough. Simone has been hiding in this house, just a few kilometres from her mum. Go knock on the door. There's two people there. Before they knock, Nikki checks the back in case Simone decides to do a runner. Hello? Hi, how are you going? going? Um, I'm Constable Dawson. I'm from the Missing Persons Unit. Just um, wishing, um, wanting to know if I could come in and make some inquiries. Yeah, no worries. Yep, no problems. Thanks for that. What? Hi, how are you going? Hi. Yeah, oh, no, 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 no,
So how are you feeling? <laughs> Everything's calm? Yeah, yeah, we just sort out a few things, that's all. It's 43 years, we've been under a lot of pressure lately and it's just got to me. Yeah. A few things were said, so. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me where you were or? Guy, yeah, I was in the hospital for a little while, not for long. The, um, they tested me for stress pains, told me to take it easy. And I met this guy in the hospital and he offered me to stay there for a couple of days, so I went there. So when did you come home? This morning. This morning. This morning. <laughs> It was an emotional moment for Bernie's loving wife. I opened the door, I had a big cuddle and kiss and love him. <laughs> and tears, a lot of tears, yeah. He got one foot in the door. That was all, one foot in the door. Yeah. And it's too quiet here without him. I'm not used to being on my own. And I love the never company. Been apart. No, we've never been apart. We're always together. Always together. Yeah. It's hard when there's only two of you too. Yeah. yeah you know, there's lines and numbers and stuff, people you can ring and talk to. Yeah. Does it help when the stress gets too yeah. much? It just helps. Sometimes it takes the cap off it. Yeah, I don't It's good that. advice from Mark, but it looks like they won't be needing it. <laughs> a 43-year-old love match as strong as ever. It's great. Bernie's back with Julie, back where he belongs. The love affair continues, so we'll be on to another job. Back in Queensland, at the end of a long day, Bruce Morecambe is feeding Daniel's horse bullet. There's certain things that you just can't leave behind. It's as though Danny's part of those. And one of those is, of course, his horse. It was probably his prized possession. It was something that comforted him when you roused on him. You know, you'd sort of wonder where he's uh, gone off to and, and he'd be down talking to his horse. So he always talks to you. He sort of grunts and neighs and, and uh, it's as though Danny's talking to us. Come on. If we left him behind, it's as though we're leaving Danny behind. So uh, he's, he's always coming with us. Meanwhile, in the search for sailor Ron Anderson, Nikki is back in Port Stephens where there's been a harrowing new development. Just received some information about a possible sighting of a body off one of the little beaches around here. So we're just going to go check it out now. Locals report seeing something floating in the water right where Ron's yacht was found abandoned. We just got a call from uh, Coast Patrol, just up the top there. Um, they state that a man called them up, stating he was pulling his uh, boat in at the boat ramp and saw what he thought was a body. After 12 days, police wonder if they have finally found Ron Anderson. Up in Queensland, at the Morecambe home, Denise and Bruce are spending time with Daniel the only way they can. Hello. Happy times. I'm the big unit. A house full of innocent children. I want it too far. Priceless memories. Daniel's voice. Happy birthday. A reminder of the time when their family was complete. Before Daniel went missing, I probably thought the world was a perfect place. I mean, I mean, everyone has their problems and things like that, but but now I'm not very trusting of a lot of people. I probably think that any person that I meet could be that person that took Daniel. Even people that have helped us, I sort of wonder why, why are these people doing this? For devastating years, and still impossible to stop hoping. At the moment, I think we're sort of just in limbo. We don't know whether he's dead or whether he's alive. We hear uh, reports of overseas children that have been found after four, five, six years. And that's what we just keep our hope up for. But until we've actually got that answer, until I can physically see, until the police can physically tell me they've found Daniel's remains, I don't think I can really believe that he is dead. I do hold hope. I mean, my head tells me that Daniel's dead, but my heart tells me that there is hope that he may still be out there. And it's this eternal hope and the incredible community spirit that drives Daniel's parents. I think we have all been very patient in letting justice take its course. But I think it's time. It's time we had an arrest. It's time we had some answers as to what happened to Daniel on the 7th of December 2003. It's time Daniel was brought home. 
the search for sailor Ron Anderson reaches a critical point. Did he drown at sea or make it to the shore? Obviously, we'll have to notify the relatives and um, let the bosses know. And the disappearance of 65-year-old Robert Gilmore. We're going to find him. Don't oh, worry about that, OK? <laughs> he walked out of his nursing home and then nothing. Please. In South Australia, a photo deliberately aged gives new hope in the search for Christine Redford. It's Nine years of wondering may finally be over for her grieving sister. Maybe one day we'll have a cuppa together and a drink and talk about what's happening. Plus the incredible search for Eric Trist. Mandy goes underground to find her man. I find that really disturbing. You know, there's people actually living down here.